This is a setup guide and tutorial for prismatic ambient dynamic bias lighting. I'll be installing and using version 6. The first thing it's going to ask you to do is select your language and then agree to some terms and conditions prior to installation of the software. Once you agree to that, you can pick where you want to install the software, what you want to name the shortcut, what shortcuts you want to add and where, and then confirm and install the software. Even if you've set up your hardware correctly, you're likely to see this error that no light packs were detected. If you canceled out of the setup because you thought this was an error, you can return to the wizard through the device tab. As I'm using a dream color light box that is add a light compatible, I'm going to select that option, but choose the one that works for your box. We're then prompted to select the port number, the baud rate, and the color format of our RGB strips. Leave the baud rate at the default value. Select RGB. If you notice that two of the colors are swapped later on in the process, you can return to the wizard to change this setting to calibrate to the appropriate colors. The most complicated part of this setup is selecting the appropriate serial port. You can search for device manager and then scroll down to the ports option. Here you'll see a list of COM ports. COM port 4 is the correct port for my case. Yours may be different. We now need to let Prismatic know where our lights are located behind the monitor. On the left side are three common ways that people add RGB lights. Simply enter the number of LEDs and click the option that is appropriate for you. If none of those options work for you, you can use the Customs tab. The way this works is you'll select the number of lights on the top of your monitor, the bottom of your monitor, and the sides. Keep in mind that the numbers on the sides will double since it assumes you have the same number of LEDs on the left and right. Don't bother adding the total number of LEDs on the left side. Once you've added together your top, bottom, and sides and hit the custom button, it will automatically calculate the total number of LEDs you have. If your lights go from right to left, select invert order. Check to make sure that the first LED on your strip matches up with where the software thinks the number one is. If you need to shift it left or right, you can use the start offset to make that change. Likewise, if your RGB strip does not start on the bottom of your monitor, you can use start offset to make that change go to anywhere you need it to be. You can also use the thickness tab to indicate how far from the edge of the screen each box should go to collect average data about color. The greater the thickness percentage, the more pixels that are used to calculate the average color. Note, the changes are not applied until you click the custom button. I've put together some calibration demos of different aspect ratios. Pick the aspect ratio that fits your monitor so that when you play the video, it's full screen. Then hide your taskbar. You can do this in Windows 10 by right clicking on the taskbar itself and choosing taskbar settings. In the control panel that pops up, select automatically hide the taskbar in desktop mode. This step is helpful because even though YouTube will play the video in full screen, when you alt tab to prismatic, it will make the taskbar reappear and it will obstruct your ability to visualize lights at the bottom of your monitor. You can use the playback speed option in the YouTube settings to adjust how fast the demo plays. It was originally intended to work as a I finished setting this up demo, but during calibration, you can use a slow motion option, either three quarter speed, half speed, or one quarter speed to give you appropriate time to evaluate all areas of your monitor as you move from color to color and demo to demo. It might be worth using this at different speeds as you move through the calibration process to make sure that you're getting the appropriate optimization you want. Start the video, enter full screen, and then alt tab to prismatic to begin calibrating your lights. On the left side of the screen, we're going to see mode, device, profiles, plugins, and about. We're going to start with mode. The drop down box at the top gives us the option between screen grabbing and mood lamp. We'll go to mood lamp in a little bit and focus on screen grabbing for now. Grab frequency is the number of times per second the software is assessing for changes in color on your screen. Our goal is to keep this above 12, and we can use the grab interval values to affect how frequently we're actually sampling. To get an appreciation for how grab interval impacts performance, this first square is moving at a grab interval of 50, whereas the second square is moving at a grab interval of 1. There's significant lag in the grab interval of 1. While the decreased grab interval does increase frames per second, it results in lower performance of our lights. 
The average color on all LEDs option averages the color picked up from all the different zones. This is more comparable to something like the hue lights, where it assesses the image as a whole and then makes the lights a single color. This is great for reading or for certain shows where you don't want dynamic lighting to be present, but it will not give you this sort of responsive lighting that you may be seeking. There's an application for both of these, and it's worth having profiles set up for both so that you can switch between them. Overbrightening allows you to set a minimum brightness of the lights. This means that even if a dull color is presented, it'll present as a brighter LED. Grab widgets are the boxes that appear on your screen to indicate each LED when you're calibrating the orientation of all of your lights. You can select between colored and white lights, and they appear either as colored or white. The eye care settings instruct the software what you want when the scene is mostly black. The minimum luminosity threshold establishes how much light is always produced by the LEDs, even in a dark environment. By contrast, the dead zone option ignores small specks of color and turns the lights off in dark scenes. At the bottom of the page is the option to turn the lights on and off. Looking in the bottom right hand corner of the software, you can see either a sun, meaning the lights are on, or a moon, indicating that the lights are off. Returning our attention to the top of the screen, we can switch our mode from screen capturing to mood lamp. The constant colors option allows us to select a static colored light. The pick screen color option allows us to set a specific color presented on screen in any application. This is great if you want to calibrate the color of your lights with a the theme of an application. Alternatively, you can use change color with rate if you'd like the program to cycle through random colors and static colors have access to the same eye care settings as dynamic lights did. Our device tab allows us to control the overall brightness of our LEDs, either because they're too bright and you want to lower the brightness, or if they're flickering because you don't have enough power through your power supply to provide brightness. You can also do gamma correction and adjust the saturation in this device settings tab as well. It's generally recommended that gamma be somewhere around two but you got plenty of room to work with. Check these boxes if you want the lights to stay on when the computer is locked, it goes to sleep, or the program is quit. You can then use the run configuration wizard if you need to go back and reconfigure, calibrate where the LEDs are placed. You may find that some applications are better with dynamic lighting and others are better with static lighting. For me, I like video games and movies with dynamic lighting, but when I'm trying to read something or I'm trying to write, I prefer to have a static background that's less distracting. We can use the Profiles tab to create different profiles of different lighting setups that we want for different activities that we do. The Profiles tab also includes an Expert Mode checkbox. This activates the Experimentals tab and is used for calibrating and setting up remote access from an Android phone or iPhone. We can discuss these options as well as the plugins options in a future video. I hope you have fun and I hope this software works well for you.